Hey there, it's Professor S, and for the next five minutes or less, I want to talk to you about cytoskeletal elements, and specifically in this video, I want to talk about microfilaments, the smallest of the cytoskeletal elements. Now remember, when we talk about any cytoskeletal element, the focus is always going to be on a combination of relative size, protein composition, and function. And in the case of microfilaments, their core structure begins with the globular protein actin. We almost always refer to this globular unit as G-actin for globular actin, and you'll see why that distinction matters in like just a second. They're not just individual actin globs. What we do is we take these G-actin molecules and we string them together to form a thread. That thread is called F-actin, filamentous actin. But we're still not done because a microfilament isn't one strand of F-actin, it's two strands of F-actin that are arranged in a particular format. Now I'm going to color these different shades of blue so you can see the difference between the two strands. But as you can see, the second strand being added, these two strands wind around each other in a DNA style double helix. So we have two strands of F-actin wound around each other to form a double helical structure. And they're composed of individual subunits of G or globular actin. There's our microfilament. When we go to the cross section, we can see it's definitely on the small side. At around seven micrometers, it's the smallest cytoskeletal element. And when we get into function, as always, I'm gonna to try to restrict this to the two or three subjects or examples or topics that are most commonly encountered in introductory biology contexts and not every single possible function. So let's start with microfilaments have a high tensile strength and they convey that to the cell membrane when they're associated with the plasma membrane. Tensile strength in simplest terms essentially represents uh, their ability to uh, withstand stretching and compression. And so some cells, and I'm thinking off the top of my head here of red blood cells, uh, have a particular shape they maintain, but then they're gonna have that shape contorted and they need to recoil to their original starting shape. And so a high tensile strength in the membrane supported by microfilaments allows these cells to retain that shape after being deformed. So it assists cells in maintaining a stable shape when they're going to experience deformity. And then in addition, they're not only useful for maintaining shape, but also for changing it because these proteins, these microfilaments can interact with other proteins uh, like a protein called myosin. These are motor proteins to produce movement and change the shape of the cell. So when pseudopods are formed for phagocytosis or for pseudopod based locomotion, uh, that, that's being driven in large part by microfilaments. Muscle cells have a lot of microfilaments because muscle contraction is a change in the shape of the muscle cell. So microfilaments will both support stability in cell shape when pushed under stress and then also support movement and change in the cell shape. And there you have microfilaments. Um, Are you smoldering? No, I'm, I'm trying to get the glare out of my, my glasses. They look like you were smoldering. No. Gla Do the tank. Hey, this is Professor S, and if you found that video helpful, here's a couple others that you also might find useful. And don't forget to click the button to subscribe so you can see all the new videos as I put them out. Get off camera now.